Hey everyone, welcome to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we are on episode number eight. Ocho. Uh, the Ocho. <laughs> ESPN, The Ocho. No, The Fin Factor, Ocho. Anyway, uh, this week we had a lot going on with social media. We had a poll that we uh, we wanted to get to and we asked some questions and we got you some responses. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we also had some, what was the other part of the social media that we had? Uh, Twitter and Facebook, and then yeah. uh, we also just made random it. questions actually from the Reddit users and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, Discord, a lot of feedback from the folks there when we asked for some questions, and uh, we, we got some good questions from you guys. Thank you for that. Yep, we also landed in Kevin Kerr's mailbag. Yes, on we did. The Athletic, which is pretty cool. Okay. And uh, we'll tell some Stand the Cup stories, which I think uh, was requested last week. Very good. So okay, so you ready to start the show? Let's do it. Okay, well I'm not going to make your ears bleed, but uh, for those about to watch. We salute you. <laughs> so uh, the, the first thing I wanted to get to before we even jump into the topics, um, they had a really cool event at SAP Center, uh, Turning Wheels for Kids, I believe it's called, and the Sharks Foundation along with SAP SV, they all teamed up and they built 350 bikes for the youth of San Jose, which I thought was just really, really cool. I just wanted to bring it up. Yeah. I really don't even have anything I wanted to say about it. I just wanted to bring it up and say that, you know, good on you guys. Yeah. Um, really awesome that you're you're helping the community out, getting these kids uh, bikes for, you know, going to school or, I mean, they had mentioned, you know, some of them are foster kids and this is yeah. like their one possession now. So um, just, well, just one of those really good stories. I just wanted yeah. to. There's a video, we'll link it to it in yeah. the corner. Yeah, we'll, we'll check it out. Just a quick little two minute video. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and anyway, just want to say, you know, again, uh, thanks for, for being an awesome part of the community and, and joining forces and making that happen. Mm -hmm. So, good on you guys. Um, from there, uh, we had talked about a lot of stuff going on in social. Yeah. And one of the things that we were wanting to talk about was a poll that Aaron had put up. And the poll was asking who you guys think would be the leading scorer for the Sharks and right. some pretty interesting results. Yeah, so Facebook. Uh, we asked, I think, someone who works at Facebook about mm -hmm. this. It only lets us put two answers up. You can't put up multiple. Let me stop you right there for a second. If anybody knows how <laughs> to put more than two for the Facebook poll, let us know. We are Facebook illiterate. Yeah. Um, but the the Twitter poll we can Twitter do, poll you can do four. Right. And, and Facebook we, you only do two. We so, got that figured out. So, so. The, <laughs> the question was was similar, but it wasn't quite worded the right. same. So I asked who the leading score would be, and the options for Facebook was either uh, Evander Kane or Logan Couture. Right. And for Twitter, I th had those two plus Joe Pavelski and other, and then you can comment on the other. Right. So uh, oddly enough, <laughs> we didn't get a clear answer on either because uh, Kane and Couture tied for both the Twitter and the Facebook polls. <laughs> so uh, six we votes for each on the Facebook poll, and then forty-six percent, I think, is what it was in yeah, Twitter. forty-six or forty-seven, something like on that. Each, yeah. and then um, Joe two percent got for Joe. Right. So it's probably one vote yeah, for yeah. Joe, and then there were two write-in votes. One of them was from you. Yes, uh, and the other one, uh, I forget who the other one was from, but um, you said. I said Panarin. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I got I got a feeling. You know, I got a feeling. Maybe uh, Doug Wilson's gonna make a move here. I don't know. But do you think um, it would happen before the season starts, or is it gonna be like a Joe Thornton esque mid season trade where he wins the Hart Trophy? <laughs> I I think we'll get to that in a later topic. Yeah. So maybe we'll save that. But uh, I, I just, you know, I kind of wanted to be um, outside of your poll there. So uh, I, I decided to pick Panarin and, and uh, you know, hopefully that comes true. Who knows? Yep. And the if other, it does, I look like a genius, right? <laughs> <laughs> the other ride in was uh, Pacioretty. Yes. Which we had talked about, I think, in episode yeah, two A couple or times, three. I think. Yeah. 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 Um, so I thought that was, a, that was a good response, too. Yeah, yeah that could happen. Absolutely. Montreal could. is yeah. a dumpster fire they're trying to get rid of everybody they're trying to get rid of their leading goal scoring captain which is odd yeah but that's all another story. he's worth something to them right so right. you may as well unload and get something back uh while you can yeah because i don't know if he's going to want to stick around yeah. and start unloading everybody else anyway right yeah which is funny because in montreal they made a big stink about the captain and him being the captain and what it means to be a captain of the montreal canadians and now it's like i'm not going to resign you yeah so i think it's going to be uh it's going to be hard for Montreal for a while to attract some players too because they see how their current players are being right. treated and it's not very good. Right. So that's the whole reputation thing. Yeah. 
So it's going to be harder to get free agents. So anyway. Yeah. Um, and we had yeah. talked about, um, I mean, in, in this poll, we're talking about leading scores and whatnot. Generally, yeah. your leading score is going to come out of your top six. So one of the other questions that we had, and I'll let you talk about it, is yeah. what if we don't go out and get a top six? Are we worried? Right. That was a question posed on Reddit mm-hmm. about um, about if the Sharks don't get any, don't make a trade before the season starts. Uh, are we worried about the top six? I am not worried about the top six. Um, in one of one of the answers in Kerr's mailbag, someone kind of asked similar question to it, and I liked what his response was. I agree with it. Mm-hmm. That um, people kind of harp on first and second lines a yeah. little too much. Like who's the first line, who's second line? Right. Uh, first and second line, for, at least for the Sharks, they get pretty similar ice time. Uh, the difference is what you're going to see for ice time is going to be power play time. Right. Uh, but let's say the top line is, uh, for me, I'll say what I think my top line is. Sorry, I hit Sorry. my mic. Um, <laughs> Joe Thornton centering with Pavelski on the wing and Kane on the wing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second line would be Couture centering with Hurdle on the left, and I think Don Scoy will be on the right. Okay. And then that leaves on the third line uh, uh, Tierney centering <laughs> yeah. uh, Meyer right. and LeBanc. Yeah. And I think that third line is going to be pretty. That's deadly. pretty dirty. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they they may be guys that are a little bit on the younger side with Meyer and LeBanc, but I mean, we've seen what Meyer's done in the playoffs, and we've yeah. seen LeBanc playing on the first line power play, and he doesn't look out of place. Yep. Um, centered by a guy who's one of the smartest players, really, on the team, and I'm, I don't know about in the league, but I mean, he's one of the smarter players, um, and he's a great playmaker, Chris Tierney is. So I, I think that line is is just going to be nasty. For and teams to deal with, what we'll see is mismatches yes. with the other teams' third lines. They're playing against each other. Yep. Uh, they're going to overwhelm them, and um, I think I think what we'll see is a big step up on those two guys, LeBanc and Meyer, next year. Mm-hmm. Um, and not quite second line scoring, but mm-hmm. a big jump. And then the, the following year, when we lose some more players, mm-hmm. uh, they'll be able to step into those top six roles. Right. So it's going to be a good transition for them. Um, I think we'll see them have probably career years yeah. this year. I Could mean, they're a very short career so far, but mm-hmm. uh, that's what we're hoping for is that next jump. That, that, next that little up. bit of growth there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, another question that we got was, um, <laughs> it's kind of a funny question, uh, why do we feel good or why should we feel good about what's going on this year? Let's not even look talk about why should we feel good about the future. Let's just talk about why should we feel good about this year. This, this year. I, Joe Thornton, I, I think the health of Joe Thornton is a big yes. deal. I think um, last year he didn't really feel healthy until about Christmas, till mm-hmm. the end, until New Year's. And before he got hurt again, he had, I think, 26 points in 28 games. I mean, that's, that's quite yeah. the pace for a man who was 30. Eight last eight, year, yeah, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, He's thirty-nine now, and he was coming off of his reconstructed knee and uh, all that, right? And so. we've talked about this before, but yeah. Joe, the way Joe Thornton plays, he's he doesn't really bang his yeah. body around. Um, both injuries, players kind of fell into him, right? That that kind of messed up his knee, yeah, yeah. so it wasn't like he was going hard to a puck and somebody took him out. He's mm-hmm. a big dude, so he, he can't really take out Joe Thornton, but um, he he protects the puck well. Yes. He can. He still has probably the best hands in terms of uh, playmaking and, yeah. and passing. Uh, passing. Yeah. Great and vision on the ice. Yeah, yeah a, another smart player. Yeah. So um, I don't see Joe slowing down this year. Mm-hmm. Even having two reconstructed knees, yeah. both bionic knees. He's going to have two bionic knees now. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 the argument could be made his knees are even better than they've ever been. Right. So. <laughs> probably not, but <laughs> you never know. Probably not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder, I wonder what he did. If he did uh, his own ligament, if he got a cadaver ligament, or they've been doing pig ligaments now. <laughs> I know this because I did my knee, and I, you have those three options when you do. Really? It. Yeah. Um, so I did the option of my own ligament. Learn something new every day. Yeah, on the so they, <laughs> they, not to get disgusting or yeah. gross, but they they take a piece of my patella uh, tendon uh-huh. and create its own ACL and, and insert it in. Hmm. The other option is to get a cadaver one. And it has a quicker recovery sure. and less invasive. So right. mine, I had to get a, uh, an incision, which yeah. takes longer to heal. Um, the other way, if you use a cadaver, they just do three holes and it's orthoscopic, and it goes okay. right in. Quicker recovery. Um, but who knows how old that cadaver is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how old that ACL or is? Or how old that pig might be. And then the pig yeah. is the other one, like... So he's got options on his recovery, at least, so that's you'll, good. You'll probably not like bacon anymore. So. <laughs> 
I can never not like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. How about that bacon? <laughs> anyway, that's another off topic. But in there, terms yeah. of yeah, thank you for for sharing. Uh, I I think, um, but. <laughs> Yeah, no, in terms of why we should um, feel good, I, I agree with you. I think having Joe Thornton back, um, see, here's the thing, and, and Logan Couture talked about this too. He was on NHL Network recently, and he was talking about his um, concussion, uh, charity for concussions that he's yeah. doing, right? And while he was talking with them, he was saying, you know, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with the way that the season went. You know, if you were to tell me you'd, we'd lose, you know, Patrick Marlowe and a Joe Thornton two top six guys on that team yeah. and and we'd still be making the playoffs and competing in the second round and sweeping the first round. and sweeping the first round too i mean that's again we talked last last episode about success and what it means to have success yes you don't win the stanley cup but that's a success when you've got a couple guys who are, who are mainstays in your top six say what you want about those players they were your top six players or two of your top six players and they're gone for a good majority of the season or yeah. for the whole season? I mean, that's that's a that's a big blow. We kind of talked about it before about the goal scoring difference mm-hmm. between the two years. And yeah. people worried when Marlowe left that we wouldn't have anyone step up and score those goals. And we actually scored more goals yes. last year than we did with Marlowe the year before. That's correct. So. And uh, the other thing with uh, with the rest of that question, I guess, that from, from my answer would be, mm-hmm. yeah, we're getting Joe back, right? Um, we're getting Kane for a full season. We talked about that before too, so I won't go too much into that. But... Even when we didn't have those players, we had the younger guys stepping in. And again, I'm not looking towards the future. I'm saying just last season, we had those younger guys stepping in, filling those holes, and being a successful team, right? So I think for this season, like you said, it's just another step forward for them. We're expecting a little bit more progression out of them. We're expecting them to have their own career years, even though they're having a young career. We're expecting them to take another step forward. Mm -hmm. And if they are part of a team that is now centered at the um, number one center off of uh, a, a Joe Thornton and having a winger like Evander Kane being placed into the lineup now as well, mm-hmm. there's a lot less pressure for them to be in those number one, number two line positions where maybe they didn't belong. And I mean, like we just talked about, look at that third line now. Yeah. That third line's dirty. We saw them flourish in the playoffs. Yeah. And I think it was the same reasons because of mismatches. Mm-hmm. Teams aren't that deep. Yeah. So they're going to they're gonna have, they're going to get their chances this year for yeah. sure. And I think why why should we be excited or why are we not worried? I mean, for me, again, all those reasons where we we're getting our guys back and the guys that did fill in, they got a lot of good experience last season, and I think it's just going to be one more step forward for them. Yep. So um, really a lot of good things to look forward to for, for this coming season. That's why I'm excited about it. Yeah, yeah. me too. When do you think Doug Wilson's going to make a move? Uh, well, okay, so in, in the Twitter poll, if you recall, my uh, my answer was Panarin, right? right? So I think Doug Wilson makes a move uh, before the season starts. <laughs> really? <laughs> remind the viewers, Panarin has a deadline of September 13th, uh, I believe, or whenever. 12th, 11th, 13th, somewhere early September, early to mid-September, right? And that was, the, the training camp starts like the, the next day. He wants yeah. to have anything done before yeah. then so that uh, he goes into training camp ready to go right ready exactly he doesn't want to be traded mid-season yeah. you have to worry yeah so um I, i'm gonna run with that do i really think we're gonna get panarin maybe not the bread but man the bread man <laughs> bread man. anyway um so uh do i really think we're gonna land panarin maybe not but uh i'm just gonna run with it anyway uh, if we do go you after just him keep saying it so that if it did, does happen you can gloat about it later. i know i'm totally gonna gloat about it later <laughs> i can't point imagine her I'm the only one that said Panarin on the poll, right? Because it has a write-in vote. Right. This yeah. isn't a John Sod Scott situation, right? <laughs> anyway, so if I could, uh, if I could run with that, and I will, um, yeah, I think he he could pick him up before the um, the season starts. Um, who we have to give up for him? We've talked about that in previous episodes. I won't go too far into it. Uh, it would suck to have to destroy some of that team we just got done talking about, where we had lots of depth and mm-hmm. and uh, those young guys really stepped into roles. That said. The fact that those guys could step into roles makes them really good trade bait. So um, to be able to land a guy like Panarin, I, I would be okay giving up some of those guys. And uh, I would say, yeah, that's when I think Doug Wilson's going to be making a trade. If we're going to get Panarin, it's going to happen, obviously, uh, yeah, before, before that, that deadline that he, he gave. Um, but yeah. that's that's for Panarin exclusively. Do right. I think yeah. any other trades would be made? Uh, if not him, then yeah, I would say sometime during the the latter half of the right. the season, more towards the trade deadline. Um, for who? 
who knows, maybe just somebody to fill a spot, but uh, you want to talk yeah. a lot too. So. Um, I think a lot of Sharks fans get upset because Doug Wilson hasn't made any moves, okay. and we obviously went hard for Tavares and didn't get him. Um, we're in talks with, I guess, Kovalchuk too, didn't get yeah. him. So um, those are kind of two big names, and there weren't that many free agents this year that were really big names to bring in anyway. Mm -hmm. But I think the fact that Doug Wilson hasn't done anything, everyone's upset because they go, hey, we didn't yeah. win a cup last year. Obviously, that team is wrong. We need to do something. Mm -hmm. He hasn't done anything. He's a terrible GM. <laughs> so I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that's what a lot yeah, of people yes, are saying. Yes, yes. Um, I think uh, the Sharks and Doug Wilson have the luxury of uh, being patient and um, being more of a reactionary move mm -hmm. than um, than a proactive uh, proactive move but... because uh, it, it, let's say there's a big injury again, like Joe mm -hmm. Thornton blows out his third knee and <laughs> needs a replacement. Uh, he, um, it, third leg joke. I'm not going to do it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, you know, they have the cap space to do it. They have the luxury of waiting. Uh, to see if something like that does happen, yeah. maybe it's not Thornton, maybe it's maybe it's Pavelski, maybe it's somebody else. Right. Somebody else in the top six goes down, hurt, and they're out for the season. Um, then we can go out and make a move. Granted, Wilson has said that he is going to bring in a difference maker. Yes, I think it was his words. Um, so we could see a move, but I honestly, I don't, I wouldn't be surprised unless there's an injury. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't happen until the trade deadline. Right. Closer to the trade deadline. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not at the deadline. Yeah, and, I mean, I, I don't want to hold him to it necessarily, but, I mean, he did say that. He said, I'm going to bring in a difference maker. Okay. Uh, and that's that's where I was saying, you know, with, with Panarin and why I feel like maybe Panarin's a good um, a good fit for that, um, to, to, to have him come in. I mean, he is a huge difference maker on, on any team you put him on, right? He automatically becomes one of your, um, probably your one of your first line guys immediately. I'd say your right? top left winger. Yeah, he's becomes. You bump Kane to the second line. I yeah, think. I would say so. Yeah, yeah. I, and I and I like Kane a lot. I think he brings a lot to the team. But I think Panarin's. But again, uh, we said the top two lines don't matter. You're getting the same ice time. You're, exactly. You're yeah. playing with Couture and Seth Thornton. That's not a terrible consolation prize. I think prize. Kane probably might even work better with Couture based on the speed. Yeah. But um, that's not what makes Joe Thornton a great player. So. It doesn't really matter where Kane plays. He's mm -hmm. going to do real well with whoever he plays with. I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, I think uh, I would say the difference makers that are currently in our minds of like out there Panarin. is Panarin, Pacioretty, right. um, maybe Duchesne because yes. he's in his last year, I yes. think, as well, um, and. Carlson. Well, Eric Carlson still has not been moved. Okay, that's another good point. I like that. Let me go back to Duchesne real fast because mm -hmm. I like I, I still like Duchesne. Um, my my question is, do you think that Doug Wilson considers Matt Duchesne a difference maker? Because the guys we just named, I feel like Panarin's a difference maker. I feel like Eric Carlson's a difference maker. Pacioretty, yeah, he, he could be a difference maker. The only problem for me for Duchesne, yeah. I like Duchesne as a yeah. player. He's a little bit older than those other guys, mm -hmm. but he's a center. Older than Pacioretty? Uh, yeah, I think Pacioretty is 26, 27. Is really? I thought he was closer to 30. I thought it was the other way around. Maybe not. I don't yeah. know. I have to check the numbers. Yeah. I'll anyway. Check. That'll be a producer note. Yeah, sure. Um, right there. My point <laughs> is, who do you bump? Yeah. Who do you, Where do you put him in the lineup? Yeah. I mean, obviously, it depends on who you trade, but we're... I think if go? you're going to get any of those guys, you're going to have to trade someone who's high enough up the roster... That you're going to make a spot for. Him. I think it'll be Meyer. Teams are going to want Timo Meyer. They're not going to want to give him up. Mm -hmm. uh, I could see Hurdle going because he's a guy that could fit in any top six yeah. in the league. Uh, with and potential. he has the versatility to play the wing as well as center, right. which is really coveted to other and teams. And he also has the potential yeah. to be a top line, mm -hmm. I think, uh, winger or center. Um, Actually, to go off of your lines earlier, I wouldn't mind seeing Hurdle back alongside Thornton and Pavelski and put Kane with Couture and Don Skoyer. Yeah, or, or Timo Meyer along that line too, yeah. I don't know. I think uh, that line, that third line with Hurdle yeah. last playoffs was You liked that one. Yeah. yeah. Even though that was putting Hurdle in the third line. I think yeah, that's the only thing. You limit his ice time a bit, yeah. but... Hey, but what that yeah. means is if you have to trade a Hurdle to get one of those guys, you're trading a third line that's guy the thing. on this you're, team. You're... Bumping up though, you're getting better. Yeah, exactly. Like you're, you're getting the better. So player. you're trading a third line player on on your roster, and something else maybe. But, but I think getting it's <laughs> hard to say goodbye to to hurdle. Oh, totally. Yeah. Fun must be always. Fun must be always. We don't want fun to go away. 
I don't think fun's gonna go away just because he goes away if he goes away right but um yeah <laughs> thanks for that yeah yeah so uh yeah I, mean, I don't know if there's really anything else to to say about where we when we think Wilson's gonna make a move he has the ability to make a move whenever he needs to like we said the team's pretty well set the team's pretty well deep it's he- it's healthy again which is great and I think Aaron's right. I think we're going to see a move probably made when we have an injury and we have a gap to fill. All right, so I'm going to say trade deadline. You're okay. going to say before the season. I'm saying before the season starts. And if, if either one of us is right, we're going to gloat. And yeah. if it happens in the middle of the season, it's a push. Yeah, sure. Why it's not? just going to suck. And so that actually brings us to our fresh catch phrase for the week. And for this week, since we want to know what uh, Doug Wilson ought to do, or what you think Doug Wilson yeah. uh, Wilson Wilson should do, <laughs> we're gonna do the hashtag WWDWD. What would Doug Wilson do? <laughs> so uh, yeah, please let us know uh, what you think. <laughs> what do you think he's gonna do? Do you think he's gonna make uh, the trade for Panarin like I think he will, uh, or I hope he will? Do you think he's going to be reactive when we have uh, an injury or something to take care of? Do you think he, there's another person that we're missing altogether? Um, I, I think he's going to work his magic and fleece either Ottawa or Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Wilson does not go out there to fleece other teams. He looks to find who's in need of a player. Thornton. He looks Kane. to find... Hey, they were in need of those players. <laughs> they were, and they, they were. got a very good deal yeah. on them. Yeah, they did. He definitely came out on top. Yes, he did. So, anyway, hashtag WWDWD, what would Doug Wilson do? So, in keeping with the topic of social media and whatnot, uh, we had one other question that was talking about, uh, or asking about Sharks futures and whatnot, mm-hmm. and um, I actually had posed a question, Kevin Kerr has had his, his mailbag um, that he put out on Twitter, basically saying, hey, shoot me some questions. And um, I actually put the question out there, and I'll go ahead and read that off for you guys right now. And what I had asked was, uh, you know, it seems like we've got a fair amount of competition for roster spots from guys like Sumela, Gambrell, and Norris. Who do you expect to creep into the lineup during the season, be it long or short term? And who are you projecting to be a mainstay in the NHL once ready? And we actually made it into the article, yeah. which was yeah. pretty cool. That was a great worded question. Thank I you. Think, uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I think it was uh, very well worded, and um, I, you probably didn't get many questions about that, so I think by default we won. So yeah. Good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we, we, we made it into the article, which is great, and, yeah. and Kurz responded in kind, and I don't know if you want to just kind of chat about that one real fast, like kind of what he said. Uh, more or less what sure. <laughs> I mean I don't want to give everything away because it's yeah. going to pay well so I feel bad giving away that's stuff, true but. yeah okay so essentially what he's saying was we've got a lot of good young players in there that um, to well, look thinks, forward to and he thinks Samela is going to take some time right. to get used to the ice so he'll probably be in the AHL he said uh, Norris won't be anybody that shows up right away because um, he's playing in college right. he's already committed to yes. playing in college I think that's okay because that's kind of more general public information or right. anything else but um basically uh Kurs kind of talked about it but we can also talk about another article that popped up and it was along the same lines it was about the sharks prospects and their features and we were actually ranked a mere 17 which is kind of low um but that's up from 30th the year before <laughs> fair <laughs> enough so it's a humongous jump and yeah. part of that humongous jump was our new shiny defenseman or sorry defense boy right no, um no longer he is now 18 <laughs> oh there you go birthday this week so ryan gambrell is now no, uh, merkley merkley <laughs> gambrell i can bro my mind. yeah uh ryan merkley is now 18 so yes. he is a defense man congratulations <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh yeah, the guy writing the article. As if he's watching, but whatever. Yeah. Go ahead. He was very high on him and yeah. uh, and um, thinks that he's a very good prospect that could turn into a yeah. very good NHL player, which we're hoping for, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And then I can't remember who he had as um, not locks for the NHL, but very high possibility of them getting in there. Uh, there was one guy whose last name I cannot pronounce, the C-H something, Shamala. That's Sasha, right? Sure, why not? Uh, Do you know anything about him? Because that was one guy we have not mentioned at all on this show. We've talked about a bunch of different prospects, and he, he's not one. He has a very Russian name, and he's American. It's <laughs> oh. kind of funny. Um, his parents are from Russia. Okay. He was born over here, but um, he supposedly is looking very good and NHL ready. Excellent. He might. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him this year. Maybe not a full season, yeah. but uh, probably give him a couple games to give him the experience, yeah. and then 
uh, be on the Barracuda, and then um, probably next season, mm-hmm. maybe we'll have some more roster spots open yeah. next year. We could talk about that in another show yeah. about what we expect to see next summer. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, I could see him coming up. Uh, Dylan Gambrell, uh, I think we'll see as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a couple other ones that he had named. Simek, the defenseman. Yeah. SI, I'm, again, butchering names probably, but... Um, he was a puck-moving defenseman, which yeah. uh, the NHL is leaning towards more. And he was kind of higher up on that list, if I remember. Yeah. Uh, not in the almost a lock, but um, very high hopes. Yeah. Um, but oh, I should say high hopes because there was a section, I think they said hopefuls. Right. And that section actually was huge. It was like 10 players in, in the hopefuls um, section that he had. Yeah, the way he broke it down was yeah. here's... Here's a list of players that are 90% going to make it. Yeah. The next list is maybe like 60 to yeah. 80% are going to make it. And then after that, it's like almost a crapshoot of who's really going to mm-hmm. make it. So, um, yeah, there was a big list of maybes in yeah. there. Yeah. Um, the Sharks, this last draft, obviously with Merkley, uh, jumped their, you know, stocker cabinets full yeah. a little bit more. Um I think uh, we could see a little bit more next year. However, we do not have a first round pick next year because we traded that to Buffalo. But at the same time, if they have finish very well this year, that's gonna be a very late first round pick, which um, is always a gamble on if it's gonna make it an NHL player. Yeah. But I just heard on NHL radio network uh, today that the, they're expecting the draft to be a strong draft again this year. Nice. So there'll be some good prospects in there. Well, and I think the number one prospect for that draft is the brother of a guy that we talked about previous. And I got the names confused last time, I think, but the editor might have fixed the notes. I'm not sure. Um, The last name was Hughes. The brother was... Jack. Quinn was the one who was playing, but Jack is the Jack is the prospect, Yeah. right? So he's supposed to go number one overall. The kid's supposedly amazing, uh, which would be interesting because I think they're both supposed to play at Michigan. Mm -hmm. Um along with Norris. Norris, right, yeah. Yeah, so all three of them, actually, yeah. the two brothers, one of them who's supposed to go number one, the other one went ninth Quinn, overall. Quinn is a defenseman. Okay. I think uh, Jack is a forward. Uh, I don't think he's a defenseman. I think Quinn's a forward only because... No, Quinn is a defenseman. Oh, okay. He's oh. the one that stick-handled in, pa- in overtime and yeah. passed it over. That was a defenseman doing yeah. that? Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, basically the three of them would be playing together at Michigan, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. So, um, again, it, you go, a guy who's supposed to go number one overall, a guy that got picked, I think, ninth overall, and then um, our guy, and he gets to play with, with talents like that. I mean, hopefully that helps him you yeah. know, get a lot, of, uh, a lot of skills under his belt and a lot of good experience and uh, prepares him really well for you know, either AHL or whatever's next to come for him. Yep. Yeah, so. and again, I wouldn't be surprised at the end when college finishes that we see him for a couple games. Yeah. Um, even in the playoffs, if there's some injuries or something, sure, he could probably sure. fill in. They'd probably do that. I've, we've seen that before. We've mm-hmm. seen the Sharks do that before. Yeah, that'd be great. And so I think even though they had us ranked in that, uh, we'll, we'll link the article somewhere, I'm sure, but um, mm-hmm. even though they had us ranked as like the 17th uh, in, in the list of teams, uh, you know, in terms of having your, your shelves stocked with prospects, uh, I think it's still promising, and, and we've said it before on the show too, where I felt like it was a really good stock that we had, and you said, you know, it's, it's good, it's not bad, right? Um, I think there can be a detriment to having too many really good prospects, because if they all get really good at the same time, that's great, and you can have a really awesome team for two or three years, <laughs> but then you gotta pay them all. Yeah. <laughs> so it's almost better, it sounds weird to say this, but it's almost better to kind of have like Stack only up. a couple really good yeah. prospects at a time. If you have to trade those away, then it sucks. And, and that's a result of being in a cap yeah, league. Yeah, right. It's a, it's almost like a, a penalty for being in a cap league. Yeah. But you have all these really good players, but you can't pay them all. Yeah. You know? We're not going to talk about it today, but yeah. uh, in a couple of years, there's most likely going to be another lockout. Right. And that means that the CBA agreement is going to be completely torn up and rewritten, yeah. especially if they take an entire season off. Um, so that could change things. That could change, you know, could change the cap. Yeah. What if they went to a luxury tax, kind of like what baseball does, mm. uh, where if you're over the cap, you're paying money into the system that goes to the lower teams. Right. And you can spend more money, and then you might see a situation where, like the A's, where they don't spend the money and they just keep the money. You know, that's that's a whole new system. That Ottawa, way. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, the next couple of years will be 
interesting yeah yeah 2020 will be an interesting year see how it all shakes out yep. and yeah for yeah. sure well i think uh from there we can go into our last topic we had talked about uh stanley cup story that you had told uh, the last last week last week yeah. and that kind of sparked some some interest from from you guys saying hey give us some more of these stanley cup stories if you want to just recap the other one real fast the the one from dallas oh Guy carboneau yeah. uh that was tying in with the pantera song that uh dallas stars have for a goal song mm-hmm. um the oh, I forget it was a, I think it was uh, Dimebag Daryl. Uh, anyway, one of the Pantera <laughs> one of the Pantera members uh, was hosting a party, and Guy Carboneau was on the deck right. or on the balcony, and he wanted to throw the cup into the pool from the balcony for some reason. Threw it and missed and hit the edge of the pool and it dented the cup and they had to get it repaired. Yeah. Um, that was in 1999. Mm-hmm. They won the cup. So uh, that was the first story that kicked off, and then uh, uh, we had some comments. I forget where it was. They wanted more stories. Yeah. So, yeah. So you got one. So from, yeah, actually, uh, one from way far back, 1924 in yeah. Montreal. Um, apparently, the the team had won the cup. They were on a bus, and they were driving back to whatever wherever they're going to, and they got a flat tire. So team gets off the bus. They go out there and they fix the tire, they get back on the bus and they had it on their way. And I think it was when they actually got to the destination, they realized that they forgot the cup on the side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> they just, I don't know why they would bring the cup off of the bus they to had change to, a flat tire. They had to but, move it to get the spare. Oh, is they, that what it they was? They had to unload ah. the trunk to get the spare tire. And so they when they did out. that, they didn't put everything back. See, I would have been the guy holding it on the bus. I don't know why you would put but it under. Back then... Especially then, sure. it was just the cup part. The top cup part is tiny. That's true. It yeah. was small. Still, and, right? It's it's I not think. as you know. There's not as much nostalgia as there sure, is sure, now because sure. it's so much older and bigger. Like mm-hmm. you're obviously not going to leave this giant cup on the side of the road. Right. It was this little yeah. tiny thing. But yeah. So they yeah. Uh, so they left the cup on the side of the road. Um, thankfully, I, I, they recovered it. <laughs> they realized it was gone. They drove yeah. back and they found it. Yeah. Right where they left it. Which so is we stole it. Awesome. Yeah. Just. Anyway, so, I mean, uh, we had talked about, you know, just little stories and things that added character to the cup. Well, not so much like physical character, like a dent, right. but um, stories like that. And so that w- Aaron's got another one. He wants uh, The too. 1940 New York Rangers yes. is, is a funny one. <laughs> this is a horrible one. Somehow, the Stanley Cup caught on fire. Nobody knows how. I don't even know how you can catch silver on fire. Yeah, that I don't get. So uh, it was Friends caught on beer, fire. Maybe? I, no, beer's not alcoholic well, enough. Okay, fair. <laughs> so... Um, so the players decided to put it out by any means necessary, and so they all urinated on the cup. Nice. And uh, they call that uh, the curse, the Dutton curse, I guess. <laughs> so this that's a whole different story about Dutton, but um, this guy Dutton, who was in charge of the league uh, for other reasons, not because they peed on the cup, but <laughs> he put a curse on them saying, as long as I live, you will never win a Stanley Cup. And he died in 1988, and the Rangers didn't win until 1994. That's so it awesome. Apparently, it worked. Uh, so yeah, so disrespecting the cup uh, gets you a, big no-no. Yeah, gets you was a 54-year <laughs> drought of Stanley Cups. Um, That's awesome. So yeah. So that's, and you, you got another that is so too, cool. Right? I'm sorry, <laughs> it was just so cool. That it's like, yeah, you I know what? You're not gonna win it for as long as I live, yeah. and, it, and it worked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty ballsy. Yeah. to say something like that. It absolutely like, is. You know. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Anyway, anyway. Uh, so 19. I'm gonna go back to Montreal again. This is the last story that I have. But um, 1957, Montreal. Uh, Maurice Rocket Richard. They win the cup. And he's going to take a drink out of the cup, apparently. I don't know if it was a champagne or beer or water yeah. or whatever it was. Um, and so he goes to drink it. Now, mind you, this the cup's it's fairly heavy. I mean, it's got a couple of rings by now, right? I think, yeah, yeah. a couple of rings. So, yeah. it's, a little so bit, it's, it's definitely bigger than it was. And, it's a little bit heavy. Yeah. It's probably a little sweaty and a little bit wet. And he goes to take a sip and slips, hits him. He chips two teeth <laughs> from trying to drink out of the cup. Like, I don't know, that's just cool. Well, you'll <laughs> always have that with you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> there you go. I mean, I don't know. I, I think, uh, I don't know if Richard was known for being, like, tough. Uh, I know, like, um, what's his name? Gordy Howe, he was known oh, for yeah. being the toughest, right? But uh, Rocket Richard, he was known as, as the goal scorer. It's the, the Rocket Richard trophy is given to the guy that gives the He's most the goals. the first one got 50. Yeah. And 50. So, I mean, I don't know. I kind of, I'd like to. <laughs> You did that kind of add to the legend if it was maybe somebody who was a little bit tougher. Like, yeah, I chipped my tooth, but you should see the cup. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's got some dents in it or something. Yeah, imagine if you scratch the cup right on the edge, yeah, like from yeah. your teeth. 
Well, know, there's uh, it, it, it's not quite a story, but um, I did remember hearing somewhere that they had some of the names were engraved on the inside of the bowl. Yeah, that which was is kind of cool. Ones. Yeah, the old old ones where some guys decided to do that. I think they actually uh, retired. I think that one's in the Hall of Fame yeah, to protect yeah. it. Yeah. So the the one that they use now is different. There's like three Stanley Cups actually. Yeah. Yeah, and they and when a ring gets full. They decided not to make the cup bigger, yeah. otherwise it would be even taller. It'd be humongous, yeah. So they retire rings and they put those in the Hall of Fame. So the cup that you see when they present it doesn't have, I think, one, maybe two rings um, that aren't on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the cup itself, the top cup, is not the original cup because of that. So, hmm. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of great stories. There's, I think there's a book, a whole book on just stories of, of uh, yeah. the NHL. Yeah, I love that. I mean, again, I, we we talked about some of the other trophies in sports, and I they just, I'm sorry, they don't they don't have Nothing. it. They don't have it when it comes no. yeah to comparing. They're I also mean, not perpetual trophies. Yeah, and and that's one of the things I love about yeah. it. You know, I love that it's it's not okay. Here's your trophy. Okay, and that's yours, and then we'll make a new one. You know, it's like it's the same thing, every every single right. time. It's the same one, and we yeah we might take a ring out and put a new ring in or whatever, but it's the same one. Um, I don't know. There's my, just something cool about that. You know, my uh, fantasy hockey league. We are in our, uh, what are we in our twelfth or thirteenth season? Um, I bought. I'm the commissioner, of course, and I bought the uh, Stanley Cup replica trophy. Nice for the winners, and we have perpetual. It's a perpetual trophy, so it's about yay tall, and uh, right now we're filling up. We're going around <laughs> the top, yeah. and we're we're we got I think uh, two or three more years, and we have to go on the bottom rungs of the cup. So the top cup is actual silver. Yeah. The rest is aluminum because sure. you know that's silver's not cheap. Right. <laughs> so uh, the part that gets engraved is not the silver part. It's the it's the uh, the aluminum part. But it's all hand engraved. Yeah. So it's cool. That's so right. each letter is different. That's um, awesome. And it's it's all done by hand. But wait, wait. So do you have an engraver do it by hand, or you yeah. guys are doing? No, it? I don't. Oh, do it. okay. Because no. you said every letter is different. That's why. So it's different because it's done by hand. Yeah. It's freehand. It's not. Oh, okay. It's okay, not okay. like a computer or anything. Gotcha. So, yeah. And mainly because it's on a rounded surface. Yeah. yeah. Like computers can't, they can't right. do the printing or yeah. the engraving on it. Yeah. So, so it's pretty cool. And the guys in our league, like, yeah, we have a buy-in too, but. They're more excited to get their name on the cup than they are to get the money. <laughs> it's great. It's awesome. It's yeah. a great incentive. Well, that's yeah. the way it should be, just like in the NHL, right? Yep. Who cares about the money. Get your and name I, on that cup. My name's on there once. <laughs> I've won once out of 12 years. There's two guys that have won three times. Oh, wow. I think. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Well, I'm not bitter or anything. <laughs> Well, anyway, I guess that's uh, that's pretty much all we had, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So we'll wrap it up. Hey, uh, thanks again for joining us for episode number eight. We really appreciate you guys. Thanks. Uh, we appreciate all the comments yes. on any forum, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Reddit. You're on Discord. Discord Instagram. Uh, here on YouTube. Yeah. Um, Especially here on YouTube. I I'd love to see a lot, lot more comments on YouTube. Um, just because that's kind of where I'd like to see a lot of it to yeah. be honest like the videos there go ahead and comment about it right there you know we're very responsive to yeah, everything absolutely anytime anyone's given us a comment I think we've always commented back mm -hmm. so um, and and again if it's something that's you know we've asked for a story from you guys or we've asked for anything from you guys mm -hmm. then uh, maybe put that in those comments and we'll put it up in the next episode and so we can say hey this guy responded this way or whatever you know um, and it's just great to have the interaction with you guys and we do get some of the interactions and, and some of the other forms of social media like the polls and yeah. and especially on Reddit and, and uh, Discord I get a lot uh, back and forth with you guys so we do appreciate that um, just keep that up we appreciate it yep thanks okay so we will see you guys next week next week bye bye see ya hey everyone thanks for checking out the show you can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.